This is My Witness News. In no way, shape, or form, fair, and certainly not balanced. And now, super producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser. Yes. Yes. It's me. Oh. Do you do Halloween? Do you have costumes and stuff? Are you thinking about that? Is that a thing? No, no. I mean, I look. I, I, think I have to go to one, on before. and uh, I have to come up with a unique costume, an original costume, and now now it's just bothering me. See, this is part of the reason I'm glad I don't really participate in Halloween, because that sounds like a pain in the ass. Like now I have to go to this party. I have to think up a costume. Like I just not my bag. Well, it's like and, I'm I'm going with uh, all, all my new film production friends, so I have to make a really good impress- impression. Oh, yeah, so it's even added a, added pressure. Added pressure. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Like uh, when I moved to England, about seven years old, Halloween was still viewed as this kind of like pagan thing. It was not cuddly. It was not about candy. It was not something for the kids. It was something that was the domain of witches and pagan sort of satanic, vaguely sinister, ritualistic stuff. Like, people that thought they were druids would go hang out around Stonehenge and do weird things uh, on Halloween in England. It wasn't the sort of, like, hallmark version of the holiday that it's become here in America at the time. And when I moved to England, I remember I moved to England. I moved in the fall. And it was a bummer. I had to leave my dog behind. I had to leave my friends behind. It was like my fourth school that year. My parents moved around an awful lot. I was miserable. I mean, like, really, I had to leave my dog behind. Ugh, it was terrible, terrible. He That's went to like my cousin, by the way. It's, it was like torture. It was, I, honestly, I viewed it as torture. My parents thought it would be really unfair. I had this... Oh, my first dog, Wilfer, he was like this 85-pound puppy. He was an 85-pound Great Pyrenees puppy who I loved more than anything in the world. He was literally my best friend. And he, being a big, bouncy 85-pound puppy, my parents thought it would be unfair to keep him in quarantine for six months. And we were only supposed to live in England for the two years. So my dog went to live with my cousins and... He wound up being such a handful, like he he that he actually wound up becoming a seeing eye dog, which was kind of cool. He he was too much for them to handle, and they uh, they, they recognized that, and he became trained. He became a seeing eye dog, and that was kind of cool to know that that had happened. But it was sheer torture having to leave my dog, and so I go to England, and I go, ugh, got this new really difficult school. The teachers are really mean. I don't know any of the kids. I, this is not good times. Oh well, at least. At least we moved in October, so it's fall. So I know I can count on a a garbage bag full of free candy. And then I found out, what? What? You don't celebrate Halloween here? No candy? That's it. I'm out. And so ever since then, I've bitterly resented Halloween, and uh, I don't participate. And your situation, Funkhauser, doesn't make it sound like any more any more fun. The shining sun. You walk these streets most every day. You wait until you get washed away. AD on the radio. So you're stressing about your costume for this Halloween party you've got to go to, Funkhauser? Well, yeah. I mean, I've never been in a group of people that make movies before. Now I have to make Mm. a good impression. I actually have to dress up for something. Last year I wore a jack-in-the-box head. That's like the easiest costume ever. Do you still have the jack-in-the-box head? I do, yeah. I can't do that. That's not original. It needs to be more original than that. Did they know you went as Jack in the Box last year? Were you friends with them then? No. No. I guess I could take that angle. Yeah. You could always do what I do because, well, as we discussed earlier, I had Halloween ripped from me when I was just a little kid, and I've harbored a sense of bitterness and resentfulness toward Halloween ever since. Like, when I got to England, it was a really tough time for me. I was like this kid that had been moved 
like a bunch of different schools in, in one year. I was I had really bad ADD and attention deficit disorder and I'm dyslexic and none of these things have been diagnosed. So the teacher just called me slow and put me in the back of the class and told me I never really amount to anything. And I had to leave my dog behind. And my one little beacon of hope was the idea that Halloween was right around the corner. I was going to get bags of free candy. But at the time, Halloween was regarded as this horrible, sinister, vaguely pagan, satanic thing in England. So it was not the cuddly Hallmark version of the holiday, hence no trick-or-treating, no candy, and it sucked. Sucked. And right around the time I was too old to trick-or-treat, England caught on. And we're just like, oh, I say, why don't you come over and get some free candy, don't you know? Sweeties, yes, yes, you can come over and get some sweeties. And like, so I missed out on the whole trick-or-treating thing, and I've always been, like I said, resentful of Halloween. But you could try this, Funkhauser. Oh, oh. You could go as, well, look, being in radio... I get asked to host a lot of different Halloween things. And around the time of Halloween, if you go out to like a club gig or if you go out anywhere people are gathered the week before Halloween, everyone's going to be in costume. And I, I refuse to participate, refuse to participate. It's just not my thing. I don't, I don't dress up. It's not a thing that I do. And uh, everybody always goes, where's your costume? W- what did you go as? And this gives you the golden opportunity, the low-hanging piece of comedic fruit, the easy-to-open gag window, Funkhauser, of going, look closely. I'm dressed as a guy that's going to bang your mom after this. Oh, So oh. you can always just do that. You know, I don't think I can say those things. Oh. They, I mean. I guess you're trying to make a good impression on your coworkers. Yeah, that's the opposite. Uh, you know what you don't want to do? Mm. It's amazing that a company even thought of this idea for a Halloween costume, let alone actually started manufacturing and selling it. (laughs) Website called HalloweenCostumes.com got a lot of backlash over the weekend when they started selling, get this, and who, I just, somebody thought this was a good idea and put money into it, and they went, yeah, that'll that'll sell, that's good. Do you know what they started selling, Funkhauser? It's just a big big super Pink Floyd fan. Who? No, oh, no, no. You're talking about the person that made the wall costume? Uh-huh. No, I saw that. There's people that are getting... Uh, oh, this is a different are... one? Oh, I thought you were teeing oh, yeah, it yeah, up yeah, for yeah. us. Okay. This else. website called HalloweenCostumes.com got a lot of backlash when they started selling an Anne Frank Halloween costume. Oh, yeah. Not, mm-hmm. co- not cool, dude. Yeah, not cool, dude. Not cool. On the bright side, at least it wasn't sexy, Anne Frank. The costume is for girls. And it includes a long sleeve blue dress, a brown shoulder bag, and a green beret. The, the kid who's modeling it isn't really selling the gravity of the costume. She's got this big smile, and she's striking a classic modeling pose. After people on social media started blasting HalloweenCostumes.com, a PR rep wrote that, quote, We sell costumes not only for Halloween, but for many other uses, such as school projects and plays. But whether that's true or not, they decided to pull the costumes off their website. Uh, sorry, kids. I guess you're gonna have to ask your parents for homemade Holocaust-related oh. costumes this year. What the hell, man? You know, There's I lost... a picture here. There's a. This is. What? Oh, yeah, not cool. <laughs> not cool. It's just, uh, yeah. Uh. So there you go, Funkhauser. You know what not to go as. I lost my first girlfriend in like sixth grade because my mom made her a, a stuffed animal witch, and her parents made her break up with me because it was pagan. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. wow, yeah, interesting. So we all have huh. horrible Halloween stories. My uh, my horrible Halloween stories is, uh, like, I tried to make my own Halloween costume once. Oh, once yeah? I went as Robin Hood, like one of the two Halloweens where I lived in America that I remember trick-or-treating, I went as Robin Hood. I had a cool little hat with a feather in it, and bow and arrow, that was awesome. <laughs> it sounds the awesome. The next year, I decided to get creative. I was like, nope, making my own costume, Mom. And she was like, y- Yar, what, what are you going as? I was like, a knight in shining armor. And she's like, and you're going to make this. I was like, yep, don't worry. I've got it all figured out. I covered a t-shirt in duct tape. <laughs> and it didn't work well. <laughs> Looked ridiculous. See, I would have gone aluminum foil, but... Yeah, still. Well, Try getting aluminum foil to stick to a T-shirt without the benefit of the duct tape. It's not going to work. Oh, yeah. It won't be a thing. not going to happen. So. All right. Yeah. Well, you want some real scary news? Yeah, yeah. Harvey Weinstein has been expelled from the Motion Picture Academy. Uh-huh. Yep. Well, Bill Cosby, Bill <laughs> O'Reilly, 
and uh, Woody Allen all welcomed him with open arms into the creepy old man academy. So there's that. It's funny. I got a I got an email from someone who was asking if we were covering Harvey Weinstein a lot. I was like, well, I don't know. Are we covering it a lot, Funkhouse? Are we just just covering uh, we it? We did like a show on. We did we did an adequate amount of coverage. Mm. You know, mm. it's just going to sparkle and fade at this point. Why are they how, complaining about it? No, no, not complaining at all. Just wondering how much attention we are paying to it. Uh, how much time do we have left in today's? Oh, show? we got a whole other one after this. We got a whole other one because uh-huh. I wanted to talk about this uh, this Me Too hashtag that's been floating around the internet. You know, four four of my ex um, significant others in a row today when I was mm-hmm. scrolling through the Facebook, th- one after the other, one, two, three, four, they all said Me Too. And I thought, like, hmm, this is, seems to be a trend happening. Well, had any of them told you about their Me Too experience? Well, and, no. And for those that don't know, if, you, if for some reason you haven't seen it, if you manage to stay off the Internet, which is always a good idea, but <laughs> if you aren't aware, the hashtag Me Too is women sharing their stories of sexual harassment or assault or rape. Women and or, men. But mostly, women and men. Mostly women. Yeah. You know... And, Funkhauser, you might feel as though, like, what the hell is going on for my ex-girlfriends pop up with these Me Too stories. But the very, very sad fact is that this sort of thing has happened to so many women, and so many women have never talked about it. On that, well, more on this later, but that's, that's really, really sad. Leave the stimulation to the professionals. Everyone is so smart. KBRC, more stimulating talk radio. There's something happening here, and you should know what it is. (laughs) The dumbing up of America. Now, more AD on the radio. So maybe we'll talk more about Harvey Weinstein a little later on. But what you said earlier, Funkhauser, was very, very interesting. We had to go to break, and I wanted to make sure we we discussed it properly. You said you were surprised, right? Because four of your exes had Me Too stories pop up online. And and for those that don't know, the hashtag Me Too is being used by people that have been victims of assault, sexual assault or sexual harassment or rape, things of that nature. People sharing their stories. And... To be clear, like four of your exes, you saw this on Facebook, and these were people that you were reasonably close with at one time or another, right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about any of the long-term relationships. It's like the Mm -hmm. the in-betweeners. Right. And they'd never told you about it. Never. Yeah. And you... Before we went on the air, you brought this up and you're like, what's going on? Is this, you know, like, is there something in my algorithm that, that's making this pop up over and over again in my Facebook feed with my ex-girlfriends? Mm-hmm. And the sad truth of it, Funkhauser, is this sort of thing is so commonplace, so commonplace. And not speaking about it, even to people that we're close with, is so commonplace. And I got to tell you, I've been, I've been really moved by the Me Too postings. That I've seen. And you know, I really hope that this conversation that's been started by Harvey Weinstein and the fact that he's a disgusting pig and a predator and possibly a rapist, I hope that the conversation that's been started by all this has a positive outcome. I hope that there's a silver lining to this. And I think talking about it, making an effort to destigmatize talking about it. And and we'll we'll deal with all this a little later on in the show. It sounds like we've got time, but destigmatizing what it takes to talk about this is an incredibly important thing. And like I said, I hope the conversation that's happening now has a positive effect on making this type of behavior something that is done and dusted or at least universally maligned and condemned because people have been getting away with it for way too long. And women and men 
but in many cases, women. It's not something you should have to go through. All right, Funkhauser, let's uh, let's get back into the news. But that's it's a fascinating one. Can, uh, what do you say? Can open worms everywhere? Yeah, but Look you know what? The, it's it's the it's the open can of worms mm-hmm. that that complicated conversation that people have been afraid to have or steered away from having because it seemed difficult or inconvenient or, or whatever. Whatever reason that people decided not to have that conversation for, well, like Funkhauser said, can open worms everywhere, and I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. One by one, we're tackling all of the hard subjects publicly and socially. Mm. Well, you know, it's just like I, I think socially – Socially in America and all over the world, too. It's not unique to America, and we can take some comfort in that. But all, uh, all over the world, we are divided. I feel as though we are regressing to this weird, kill or be killed, animalistic state that has nothing to do with how people in a civilized society should live or how we should treat one another. And this idea that if we're not winning, we're being beaten. That there's got to be a winner and loser in absolutely everything, and the other side is always wrong, and there's no room for any kind of any kind of compromise, any kind of hearing and respecting of other people's points of view. That is incredibly Cro-Magnon and knuckle-dragging and regressive to me. So, the silver lining, the fact that the whole conversation around sexual assault and Harvey Weinstein, and that, that feels like progress to me. Horrible way to make progress, but progress nevertheless, and I'll take it where I can get it at this point. What else? On Saturday Night Live, Kellyanne Conway was portrayed as the clown from It. Did you see that? I did. It was good. I didn't see the movie, but I get it. Mm, Anderson yeah. Cooper was in there, too. It was hilarious. Yeah, I kind of feel as though I uh, kind of feel as though I I haven't seen the movie, and I feel as though there were some spoilers with the way the Kellyanne Conway version of it talk. Uh, 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 oh, don't yeah. don't add to the spoiler. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't spoil anything because I haven't seen it. Mm. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and it like it it went very viral. It was all over the place. It, the clowns that were having problems getting work <laughs> because the Stephen King movie came out. Th- that's not going to help. <laughs> that, that won't. <laughs> It didn't make it any easier for them to get booked at a kid's party. Uh, what else? Uh, Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner are engaged. Mm, mm. Who's Sophie Turner? I don't know. Don't know. But the uh, the blushing beauty immediately called the family to share the good news, and apparently the Sophie Turner woman was excited too. <laughs> I saw Joe Jonas in person once, and uh, oh boy. The really? rumors seem to be true. What are the rumors? I don't swing that way, but he's he's cutie. Look at them all. Look at them all oogling him. I, I got to be honest with you, Funkhauser. I don't really know who Joe Jonas is. I know he's one of the Jonas brothers, but I if you ask me to pick him out of a... I couldn't... I've I, never I seen a more tell swoon him. than a uh, Joe Jonas fan my whole life. I couldn't... I. Couldn't pick Joe Jonas out of a lineup of people, and I definitely couldn't tell him apart from the other Jonas <laughs> brothers. Like, no, no idea. And you know what? I'm okay with that. It's fine by me. What else? Uh, Larry Flint is in the news. He's, He's offering $10 million to anyone who has dirt on Donald Trump that would lead to his impeachment. Mm. Up Larry to $10 Flint. Million. Up to. Larry, Larry Flint. Hustler Magazine founder and a pioneer for free speech, offering $10 million to anyone who has dirt on Trump that would it has to lead to an impeachment, right? Uh-huh. It's probably tempting for Trump himself because he knows he could make a quick $10 million. Uh, you could put up another crappy condo complex with that. Fine. Uh, Tito Jackson... The most popular of the Jacksons turned sixty-four yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I actually knew that. I knew Tito Jackson turned sixty-four. You did, but only because he uh, told me himself while he was frothing my latte, and then I was like, "Hey, Tito, this place isn't going to assistant manage itself." Chop chop. 
I wrote a song once. Uh, it was interesting uh, because the week before he picked me up as my Uber driver. <laughs> Go on. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers could be out for the season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, worst news to hit Green Bay since McDonald's made the McRib a seasonal item as opposed to year-round again. Oh. Oh. Hey, don't forget October 21st, Venison Day at Arby's. Oh, yeah, Venison Day. Mm-hmm. It's coming mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear, venison sandwiches will be on the menu <laughs> at every single Arby's across America. They've been trying it out in specific markets, and I think I think Wisconsin was one of them. I believe huh. that, that was the case. And now they're sort of like doing venison day all across America. Yes. That's a good alternative protein source. And apparently, if you cook it right, it is delicious. It's funny, though, because a lot of people I know that grew up eating venison, I was like, what's it like? I'm totally going to Arby's to have a venison sandwich. What can I expect? They're like, it's okay. Like, no no, no one I know who grew up eating deer <laughs> meat seems that enthused about the whole thing. Like, really, chicken or steak is much It's like much a bison burger. Have you ever had one of those? Better. It's kind of tastes I, like Yeah, a, I think I did. Yeah. I think I, See, I had bison similar burger. reaction. I think I, I ate know. that. Yeah. Good news is the venison sandwich is probably going to be pretty cheap. <laughs> Only cost you a couple of bucks, uh-huh. which is not a lot of dough. Mm. 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 I wonder if the uh, sandwich will be just as good the second day, the way the joke about it was. <laughs> <laughs> you Probably have a comedy not. gem like that. You have a comedy gem like that, you don't use it all at once. Well, <laughs> we got to roll it roll it over till the 21st, so keep that uh-huh. thing fresh, man. Uh-huh. Put it under a red light, uh-huh. a heat lamp. <laughs> Yesterday on CNN, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson once again refused to address rumors that he called the president an effing moron. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rex Tillerson was accused of doing two different things. One, saying he was going to quit. Two, calling Donald Trump an effing moron. I hope they and keep asking him that. They asked him. Well, no, but the thing is, they asked him, and he was like, I never said I was going to quit. I never said I was going to quit. What about calling Trump a moron? Oh, nice day, isn't it? Awfully clement weather we're having this time of year. Like, he refuses to say that he didn't call him an effing moron. And you know what that means, Funkhauser? That means there's tape of him somewhere calling President Trump an effing moron. Plus his I'm with the effing moron (laughs) t-shirt. That's a dead dead giveaway. All right, one more. Uh, Hillary Clinton is in talks to become a professor at Columbia University. Yep, yep, I saw that. As usual, though, Hillary is expected to lose a job to someone with absolutely no qualifications. <laughs> uh, not to be confused with Bill Clinton, who was in talks with Columbia University co-eds just to hook up. Do the piece of news about the fish. Uh, oh, uh, the man in England that tried to kiss yeah, a fish. Yeah, yeah, do that one. A man in England tried to kiss a fish, and it jumped down his throat. And nearly killed him. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, don't let this deter you from kissing fish, though. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Only because statistically speaking, still a lot safer than kissing Usher. <laughs> uh, fortunately for the man, the paramedics didn't flounder. Uh-oh. And they were able to remove the fish without having to call a sturgeon. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, a what? A sturgeon. This type of nothing's yeah. worse for a joke than having to explain it. <laughs> Sturgeon is a type of fish, Funkhauser. Ha, I just wanted ha. to hear it again. <laughs>